hold a meeting to order a regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Florence, Arizona. Today is the 18th of March. Miss um, Benitez, will you take the roll? Certainly. Commissioner Capolongo. Present. Commissioner Pro. Commissioner Simmons. Present. Vice Chair Frost. He's trying. Vice Chair Frost. Why no, he's here. Chairman Pranzo. Present. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four, discussion, approval, disapproval, and minutes of the regular meetings conducted on March 4th, 2021. I'll open it up to the commission. Any comments? I apologize for my absence for the last meeting. Um, my wife had wrist surgery and uh, I was unavailable. Well, these things happen. Is she doing well? Oh, she's doing great. Yeah, she's no stopping that girl. Okay. Thank you. Um, then I'll move that we approve the minutes, the, re the minutes of the regular meeting conducted on March 4th, 2021. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. So we have a motion by Chairman Pranzo, second by Commissioner Simmons. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All uh, Mr. those opposed. Mr. Frost Chairman, said I uh, as well. We received a message from uh, Vice Chair Frost. His microphone is not working. Uh, oh. I've asked him to go ahead and just call in via phone. Leave leave this link open, but he can call in via phone. Hopefully, uh, Sean, you can hook him up at that point. Oh, okay. Definitely. Just we don't uh, get to see his smiling face. Could be worse. Right. It could be a cat like that lawyer. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new business. Presentation, motion to approve, approve with conditions, deny of a design review, PZ 2117 by Holly Architects for a new Superstar Express car wash. Ms. Benitez, do we have a presentation? I'll give a short introduction presentation and then I'll hand it off to the representatives that are here. Or from Carl Holly Architects. The Superstar Express Car Wash is located in the Anthem Marketplace. The zoning is currently B2 for commercial, so the use fits or is allowed. The building will be approximately 42,000 or the 40, 190 square feet will be the building. The lot is currently vacant but it is lined for parking. The new car wash will have 24 stalls for self-service vacuum, and there'll be the drive-through express car wash. It will allow, at any time, there can be at least two to three employees. And the landscaping that they will use is current, and then they will also put in new landscaping to help with the flow. There are two access points as required by the code. And the property will have fire and refuse, refuse maneuvering requirements met set that were set by the town. There was no public participation necessary for this case. The staff found that the request was in compliance with all of the town codes and it keeps with the character, the design of the building with what is already established in the Anthem commercial marketplace. I will now pass it off to the representatives that are here today, tonight. Well, I'll open it up to the commission. Um, who is the focal point? Who's gonna I'm head gonna head say head. Jeff and four people are gonna answer. So right. <laughs> I need to know who the focal point is. It's, it's been, uh, Jeff, this is Jeff again with Caller Architects. It's been me uh, throughout this uh, pre-app and uh, design review process. 
and Brian Turco will take over the construction documents. All right. Um, how about Ms. Benitez puts up the, um, the view, the drawing, and you walk us through it. Can you sure. do that? Sure. All right. Go for it. So here's our, um, our site plan. Uh, it is an existing parking lot and we've provided enough parking lot to accommodate um, the whole master um, site plan uh, in terms of uh, the requirements. Um, you would basically, you would enter into uh, that driveway in the southeast, southwest corner there, and then you will approach to the, um, the, the entry point um, where you pay what kind of car wash you want. And then you will simply turn around in that U-turn area there. And we have, we've provided a, uh, an escape lane to the, to the right there, just uh, left of that transformer. And from there, that's the entry point, and then your exit will be towards the west. And, and then from there, the, the customer will have a chance to uh, get their free, free vacuums from there. Um, the refuse uh, trash enclosure is located in the very northeast corner there. Um, we provided some, uh, th those, uh, those refuse turnaround if you can see there, um, and it'll, for, a, for an easy traffic to go in and out and uh, to get that uh, location there. Um, and then uh, all of our uh, utilities is, are located on the, on the east side of the, the property along that, along that driveway. Um, the water is gonna be coming from there and I believe the sewer is going to be coming up north into that um, that property. Uh, the parcel number is two one three zero two zero two eight zero there. And um, can we uh, talk about the elevations? Yes, if you like. Yep. And yes, uh, we will we will we will provide landscaping and we will conform with the with the town requirements. Okay. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to the commission for questions. Is Mr. Mr. Frost Wally. on the line? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, this is kind of hot pots together, so I appreciate your patience with me. Sure. Um, just had uh, uh, one question, I think, of, of the applicant, and that is, in comparing this to other car washes of this type that I've been in, um, this has straight in entry to all the bays, requiring a wider turn area for vehicles to be able to get in there. All the other ones that I've ever used, the, 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 the bays are angled a little bit, so you don't require as much turning radius. And I'm wondering if that is intentional or if um, this is standard with uh, this car watch. Um. It's it's I would say it's pretty standard for um, for for superstar car wash, and it's it's also site related how the way the, the site is oriented oriented for uh, for the design, and that was that was our best uh, solution and best um, access point to get to the car wash itself. Okay, yeah, it's 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 your call. It's just I've never seen one with straight in like this, and I. I, I appreciate the way that this is oriented because the noisy end of the operation is down against Hunt Highway. Um, and with, with that question, um, what are your what are the hours that this car wash will be operating? Um, yeah. I believe those hours, Tim. Uh, this is Brian Turco. I think it's from seven thirty to seven is the typical hour, especially the summer hours. Oh, great. So, so noise shouldn't be a problem anyway. All right. That's all my questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frost. Thank you. Uh, I need a little help. Where is this car wash in relation to the gas station that Safeway is operating? Um, the car wash is uh, north of the of uh, the Safeway gas station. And then this, uh, uh, I, I believe uh, just south of this is the McDonald's there. And then... Um, Southwest of this 
for our site plan to go into this is where the safe way is. So you're, you're at the very end of the parking lot going north? Yes. Um, there's a lot of parking lot north. I, I don't know if we're at the furthest north, but we're towards the north, yes. All right, what I'm, what I'm concerned about, because I don't have a drawing that really shows me where it is in relation to the Safeway Shopping Center, if you will. Um, it can get pretty crowded in there, especially on a Sunday. I just want to make sure that Safeway is not giving up room they're going to need. Um, I believe Safeway is pretty, pretty far. Let me see here. Can I pull up a map of Plaza? Yeah, maybe we can we can pull out the, the Google Maps. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, just as a point of clarification, this is north of the Safeway uh, gas pumps. It's north of the McDonald's. It's north of the recently approved Big O Tire. So this is not quite at the top end of the whole property, but it's getting very close. There's only really one buildable parcel left. Oh, okay. All right. I don't need any more than that. Okay. Any other questions or comments, gentlemen? Mr. Chairman, I, I did notice one other thing. In the staff report, it says there will be 24 bays, but on the plans that we're looking at, it says 25 bays. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's just a typo on the staff report and that the plan that we're looking at is correct. Yes, uh, the plan that you're looking at is correct. Um, it was it was 25 at one point. Um, um, now we we took we took out a bay where that uh, where the crosswalk is for the accessible accessibility route and to connect to to public right away. That's that's where that's where it came out from. I think the plan still shows 25. I counted them at 25, and that's what the the little moniker up in the upper part of the of the plan says: 25 vacuum bays. I'm just counting 24 right now, uh, Mr. Vice 24. Chair. I'm looking at the landscape plan. I'm only counting 24. Oh yeah, you know, I think I I think I figured out what I did wrong. The, the scale I was looking at this, I didn't realize that that was the uh, dumpster bay up there. I think I counted that the vacuum stall. Okay, I'm I'm good. So we just need to correct that where it says 25 vacuum bays on the dry, and we'll be good. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. We have a motion, please. Mr. All right, Chairman, I'll make the, I will make the motion to approve uh, the Anthem Superstar Express Car Wash Design PZ21-17 uh, with the recommendations from staff. We have a second. I'll, I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Simmons, second by Vice Chair Frost. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Jeff's one and all. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys. Sorry about that. I think I sent the link to everyone um, for the one specifically for, for my link. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't on Facebook. <laughs> okay, moving right along. And thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you commissioners. Thank you, staff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, old business, discussion, decision to determine if the commission wishes to return to in-person meetings in the town council chambers. Mr. Chairman, and at your I request, we're leaving this on the agenda to discuss each meeting. Um, I was in attendance uh, in person on Monday night at the council meeting. Um, they have uh, the, they have it set up that the council actually sits down on the floor of the council chambers 
and a very wide U-shaped arrangement of all of the tables that are in there. Uh, the individual microphones um, are spread out a minimum of six feet apart. Uh, the only people that were sitting actually in close proximity to each other were a few staff members uh, in the middle of the room. Uh, public speaking was held at the, um, the podium, which has been moved all the way over to one corner of this large uh, horseshoe or U-shaped speakers tables uh, and away from the rest of uh, the uh, elected officials and town staff. It seemed to work pretty well. Um, there, however, all of the speakers were live. Uh, basically, if, if you're on the agenda, you know, you're, you're there in person. Um, so, I, you know, it would depend on how you would like to proceed or just stay with this format for the time being. That's your call. If the biggest thing, though, is if um, not all the commissioners are willing to be live, then it's, we do not want to go into a hybrid meeting trying to have commissioners remote as well as live. That would be very problematic, and we've been asked to avoid that. Well, we need to be unanimous on it. <clears throat> I uh, took some time over these last two weeks and asked people that I know um, they don't follow planning and zoning, but they do follow the, uh, the council. And they really didn't see any difference. For them, they were sitting behind a computer screen, um, just listening to what was going on. Um, so I'll leave it up to the, the other commissioners. It just makes no sense to me to sit in town hall um, other than um, the few minutes we get before the meeting to see each other and um, even talk with staff. Staff is present, is that correct? Uh, the only part of the staff, only those people that have an item on the agenda that will be spoken to. Otherwise, uh, uh, department heads, other town staff came in via Zoom also. Okay, and how about applicants? Um, that evening, I'm trying to remember, there was there were no applicant driven items on there uh, other than on the consent agenda for some awards of contracts. So well, uh, that we really didn't experience it either way. Well, for me, trying to make up my mind, if if the applicant is not there, if we're bare bones staff, then to me, and please other commissioners feel free to disagree, but it, it just doesn't feel like, it feels like the only thing we're doing is appeasing ourselves to make ourselves feel like we're doing our job by being in town hall. But we're really not changing anything in terms of how we interface with the public. So I'll leave it to the other commissioners how they feel about it. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, in spite of the technical difficulties that we occasionally run into with this, this is, I mean, we also have people beating down the door wanting to be present at these things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this makes more sense for now. No, you know, I agree. If, there, if, 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 if there was a big ticket thing that, you know the the public had a big interest in then yeah we we would need to do that but you know for just nuts and bolts business this is fine i think mr simmons no i was just going to say i i would agree with that um you know i th there's no issue with remaining remote as much as being in person would be nice um for just the the meetings that we have unless there's something that has great public interest just meeting remotely and having the town be able to view it on um any of the streaming services or join the meeting and you know be here as we're speaking i think this format works well for what we're doing okay mr frost i agree let's leave it tabled and look at it again next month Okay, then. 
the return in person meetings in the town council chamber shall be tabled. Moving right along, presentation. Who gets to do the general plan update? Oh, I'll do it this time. <laughs> um, <laughs> we had we had a uh, meeting with the consultant actually last week, a very uh, productive meeting. In person. Uh, they came down, we spent a couple of hours basically um, working on how we're going to format and present the land use portion of the general plan update. And of course, that's always the most con well, controversial or that one you know, generates the most interest is how land use is gonna be dealt out. And uh, we, are, we are looking at making a number of changes to the existing general plan as far as land use designations. If you look at the designations that we currently have, there are many that either overlap or are so close in proximity to each other. For example, low density versus very low density. And you look at the definitions of those and it, it was just basically, it seemed like all they wanted to do was put another color on the map. We're gonna try to make something a little bit more meaningful that would allow for uh, you know neighborhoods to evolve a little bit more naturally. Um, we're also, if you look at the existing general plans, you know, the town has a multitude of PUDs that have been approved and the uh, development agreements are still active, but only one that's really reflected on the general plan is Merrill Ranch. And I'm only guessing that was due to the fact that it was actually under construction when the last plan update went in. However, that doesn't really address the fact that we have all these development agreements, which are contracts, uh, that are still valid and we should be reflecting those so that we want to pull all of those out, demonstrate them, and that's going to make the discussion on uh, the remaining land use designations and, and uh, uh, you know, just the overall intensity of uses, et cetera, a little bit easier to handle, I believe. So that we really went through all of that in detail. Next step is they're coming back to us with um, kind of a sample of what we discussed in uh, GIS form, and we're gonna start working on a calendar for community input meetings. Uh, again, we're working as if they're going to be live, but uh, it, you know we can always stay in this format of Zoom meetings if necessary at that time. Okay, uh, question, last, last update. You had made a comment and I'm, I, need some clarification. We had on our general plan some land that Queen Creek is is overlapping into. Yes, sir. Is it, uh, Mr. Chairman, it right? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners, general plan planning areas um, are not cast in stone. State law, you know, allows you to have them. But once you establish a planning area, doesn't necessarily create a boundary the same as a corporate limits would be. In other words, after land is annexed, then you've established a boundary. But the general plan itself does not establish a hard boundary. And um, I can't remember the exact number, but they've uh, annexed within our planning area by I'd say three quarters of a section uh, coming in from the very northwest portion of our, our planning area. And at the same time, that's something else we're discussing is our planning area really extended further than we're gonna be able to easily provide services for. And providing services um, in some of those areas means sewer and water, but in all areas, it means uh, fire and police. And of course, we're talking either new stations or substations or so that we have adequate response times, et cetera. So we're gonna be taking a hard look at that throughout the process, whether or not we should be reducing our planning area and bringing the dividing line or the, the finite line at the top uh, south, anywhere from um, two to three miles. And it still puts us all the way up to Bella Vista. Even if we came in three miles, we'd still have a planning area that extended all the way to Bella Vista. Okay, the little town is growing. Mr. Chairman, can I pose a question? Any please? questions or comments? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, and we can yes. see you. Vice hey. Chair Frost. My, my talented wife solved my computer woes, so. 
Um, uh, Larry, you raised a question in my mind when you talked about um, several PUD agreements that have been in place apparently from the way you were describing them 10 plus years. What's the um, contract limit on these things if we've got that old of PUDs hanging out out there? Well, they're written into the actual PUD and development agreements, and uh, they are almost without exception 20 years. And uh, some of these, the, the, the oldest ones were uh, 2005 and six. Uh, we have some that were not executed till about 2010. So they still have life in them. Now, what typically will happen um, is once they get close to, um, you know, grandfathering out or sunsetting out rather, um, they're gonna, they, the uh, property owners are most likely going to come in and try to initiate uh, renegotiation or, you know, reestablishment. Considering we have a completely different administration now, that's gonna be the opportunity for the town to um, get in and do modifications that are more in line with the town's interest uh, than what was done back in those days. Yeah, back in those days, we were really quite, uh, I'm trying to find the right word. We were learning to walk. Yes. And that's how you learn. You know, you make some errors and you go back when the opportunity presents itself and you correct them. Right. Hey, Larry, just a curiosity question. Is there an exhibit that shows where those PUDs are at and kind of the extent and where they're located? Yeah, the, the actually the zoning map that we have on our website, uh, the zoning map them, itself does call out the PUDs and they're all named. Uh, so if you actually had interest in a specific one, you can let us know and we can pull a digital file on that particular PUD and provide it for you. Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay, moving right along. General town update. Oh, okay. several things. You had asked at the last meeting just on an update on the status of the state prison. Um, there really isn't a whole lot to report on that. Uh, you know, they they had made their announcement about closure about a year or so ago. And then COVID hit and a lot of stuff went on hold. It's our, uh, what we understand now is the, um, since the budget, the upcoming fiscal year budget has not been passed yet. We don't have, no, are aware, we are not aware of any major plans in the works or anything for the building itself or adaptive reuse or upgrades or anything like that. It's our understanding at this point that um, all the present employees uh, would be relocated to the Iman facilities. So they would stay local. Um, as far as the, the status of inmate relocation, we're, it's still kind of undetermined. Um, they have not really indicated when or you know, where or when those will take place. And that's really all we've been able to ascertain at this point. It's all at the state level and they share when they feel like sharing. Although I, I will say, though, they have kind of kept in contact, although uh, on a regular basis, although it just isn't, there's just nothing really progressing at this point to give us any updates on. But they, they, I understand that they've been uh, diligent in uh, just kind of checking in with the town on a regular basis. Well, I hope so. State shared revenues are at stake here. Right. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Larry, um, is the Iman complex incorporated into the town? Yes. Yes, uh, not only the complex itself, but additional properties that are held by the private prisons that have not been developed yet. We have some of those too. So they could do expansion that would already be within the town limits. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Moving right along. Potential business park. Now, this is just kind of an FYI. Um, you know, new jobs are always important to the town, and we've been uh, receiving increased interest in whether a town would be receptive to a business park of some form. No specifics at this point in time. So, at staff level, we're kind of put together a little brain trust. There'll be meeting starting next week to discuss exactly that. Um, to where there will be areas that either zoning already exists or based on the general plan where it would be logical to rezone. 
uh, in order to create a business park type uh, compatible zoning classification. Um, also, as part of the general plan, we'll be re-examining a lot of areas that were designated for industrial and business park that may or may not be the best suited for that. Uh, the town's new economic development the economic development director will be included in all of those discussions. Well, I for one would love to see something like that come forward. Yeah, we're hopeful. Put it on the south side of the river. <laughs> Some of those properties that are already available are exactly there, the south side yeah. of the river. Actually, one in particular, it's on Plant Road, just on the south side of the wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, I know the one. Yeah, there's about a 40 acre, I think it's 40 acre chunk right there that's already zoned. I thought Harold Chris had that. No, that's not owned by the town. No, Harold Chris. Uh, oh, Harold? No, uh, this, I don't believe this is Harold's. Harold's on the east side of Plant Road. This is on the west side. Oh, okay. The farm. Yes. Uh, Mr. All right, Mr. any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, just another question of Larry. Uh, does the town's current planning boundary extend northwest enough that we have any railroad frontage? Oh, we have a lot of railroad frontage. Um, yes, it does indeed. We've got the intersection of the magma line and the, um, I just blanked, the one that- Copper runs. Basin. Pardon me? UPR. Copper Basin. UPR. Yeah, Copper Basin, that's the other one. We actually have that full intersection and several miles of frontage on along the tracks in both directions. And I, I guess I should have phrased that a little bit. I'm talking the Union Pacific Railroad, the, 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 the seemingly main line that we have out here. Um, yeah, I think we have some in that. Um, I don't know how much. That's part of the general plan discussion. We'll be looking, we'll be focusing on the rail and, uh, Hopefully we'll be able to ascertain the level of use that we could anticipate from it. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but the state is already looking or already been approached, state land department, uh, about selling a large piece of land that is just, um, would be on the east side of I-10, just on the other side of the Ironwoods, which is down by Picacho Peak off of I-10 for a major rail switching hub. Uh, to get it out of downtown Phoenix and to get it out of downtown Tucson. So what that may or may not do to access and transportation on these other lines, I'm not sure yet. And I'm not sure that the railroads is sure yet either. We did that, we did this fire drill about 10 years ago. Right. That's when so. it started. Yeah. And uh, Union Pacific was adamant unless they had a siding that would take a full freight train, they would not run a passenger rail. Right. So, yeah, I was, I was peripherally involved in that about 10 years ago uh, um, in a different project, but that was definitely a focus of what we were working on. And I think like a lot of them, it just kind of um, went by the wayside for a while when the economic crunch came mm -hmm. in the early teens. And you know we haven't heard that it's been uh, revived at this point, but I would not be surprised at all if it's you know, at least being talked about across desks somewhere. It would help, Mr. Chairman. Yes, but Larry, I, I'm I'm pleased you're looking at that because now that we're getting more information on the freeway alignment and knowing of these railroads, I think it pre presents some unique opportunities for us for some industrial areas, although not according to Mr. Franzo's desires to be on the north side, on the north side of the river, but some <laughs> unique opportunities with essentially three rail lines coming through here and the freeway forthcoming. Right, and we will be getting, a, it uh, It looks like three interchanges off the freeway. Oh, well, the Copper, Copper Basin line is owned by the mines. And one of the problems they have is, and the mines up in Miami, one of the problems they have is that Union Pacific moves the cargo so slow that they, their preference for transporting copper is truck because the railroad just, it, it doesn't move. It gets tied up in Tucson 
or right. tied up in Phoenix and it doesn't get out. You know, if they if they build a, a staging area by the Picacho Peak area, then the Copper Basin, which is privately owned, um, will become active. And I, I don't know about the magma line, where that'll go. It, it'll be interesting to see how it comes into focus. Any other questions or comments? Moving right along. Is there an other? Uh, just to give you an update, um, at their last meeting, the town council approved the ordinance uh, that amends the town or the development code for home occupation. So it goes into effect in 30 days. They also approved an ordinance uh, for recreational marijuana. Um, there was a brief discussion uh, regarding planning and zoning's recommendation to them. Um, as in, and we actually added to that, reminding them that the uh, new law would require that any growing or cultivation facility have a 10 foot secure wall or fence surrounding it. But the council held with their original direction to staff and approved it. It would be that the recreational marijuana would be allowed in any business zone. Uh, and that goes into effect in 30 days from the date of action also. So they'll allow it into heavy and light industrial. Yes. You win, Mr. Pap Capolongo. It's not, a, it's not about winning or losing. Uh, that's enough. That's all the others I have. Okay. Um, all right, future agenda items. I'll defer to Maricela. There are no future agenda items at this time. I'm sorry, say that again. There are no future agenda items at this time. Okay. Well then, um, call it a public. Do we have any public? There's no public attached to the meeting right now. Okay. Um, then close call to the public. Call to the commission, current events only. Mr. Chairman, just a, a curiosity that we can um, defer to the next meeting, Larry and, and Maricela, just curious as how our sports complex that we reviewed several months ago, how or that's at in the process. Just a, an update, the next meeting would be great. Hey. Any other current events? And I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. I have a second. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Capolongo, second by Vice Chair Frost. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Good meeting, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.